Hello Egyptology lovers, today we're going to do a lesson about the stella. The best way to learn hieroglyphics is to actually read the stellas and the papyrus that you see or encounter online or even in the museum or even if you ever go to Egypt or anywhere else in the world where the museum may have them. These were known as funerary stella, so they're more commemorative. So it would be put in, for example, as a um, as a tombstone or a stone in order for you to know that this is the person that lies here or please to know that this is the person that gave offerings to a certain particular god so every egyptian who had some kind of money or income would be able to do this type of thing so what we're going to do today is read the stella and you're going to learn who this person is and who that person is and who are the other names inside here and what is all this offering over here but before we do that i've gone ahead and divided the text so if i just shift over here now you see I've done the division of the text, so you know how to read it. So we're going to proceed by reading from the top, top right to the left, and continuing on from the right to left, right to left, right to left, right to left, and this little section here, right to left, and then up and down. Now, before we, can, we start, let me at least introduce the Stella. This belongs to the chief of potters, Pepe. And Pepe was the chief of potters who made pottery. He was about the 12th dynasty, 18th century, and the stella was made by him in order to immortalize him and his family uh, for, the, for the rest of time or eternity. So let's begin reading this. This is pretty much the introduction. What I'm going to do is also explain a few things as we read and show you that even in the Egyptians who weren't perfect made mistakes. Uh, they probably didn't check to see or didn't ask, and the mistakes were made, but unfortunately it was probably paid for, and it's too late. So let's start with this and see what this papyrus is all about. I mean, this stella is all about, most likely made of limestone, which was an easy to carve. So I'm going to expand this here. All right, here we go. So what we have here are the two eyes, the eyes of Horus. So they're usually known as the person would be embodied in the stone and would be able to see through them throughout into the world. This is the Shen, this is the eternity or the cartouche. Uh, this is basically eternity or circular life. Now let's start over here. We have here the royal offering. So the royal offering given to Osiris. This is the name of Osiris and his determinative. Foremost of Westerners, since the sun set in the West, it is known the area of death. So it's the setting going to the world of the underworld or the world of the dead. So he, uh, in the mythological lore, Osiris was the god of the dead and therefore foremost of the Westerners. Continuing, the great, the great god, Lord of Ab, this is the bilateral hieroglyph, Ab, Lord of, so Ab, Jew, so Ab, coming over here, this continues the word, Jew. Now, since it's a two-letter bilateral, Ab, the B over here, which is a foot, complements it, so you know this is to be read as Ab, not Mur, because that's the other way you can write or pronounce this, so Ab, Jew, which is a rolling hill or a mountain, where the sun rises, and Abju is the Egyptian name of the city of Abydos, which is Greek or Romanized, and of Wet Wawet, which is another location. Now, continuing, Lord of the Sacred Land, giving you voice offering or invocation offering of bread beer, cattle or ox, fowl or bird, linen, clothing, incense, oil, all things good. Remember the word nifr? This is the complementary word, so it's spelled out. This is the word nifr, nifr the triliteral hieroglyph with the three letters. But the three letters are written out as well. F -r -t -n -f -r -t. So it's pluralized. Nifr minus the N. So all things good and pure 
and satisfying thing. To the ka, to the ka of or to the spirit of, the overseer, this is a cow's tongue, and the supervisor, when he gave commands, he used his tongue. His words were powerful, and the speech made people do things and move, and the gods did the same. So the tongue and the, and the cow being a very important animal in the uh, Egyptian culture, the cow tongue became an overseer. So whenever you have someone who has commands or commands an overseer of anything, they would put the cow tongue. Overseer of the potters. So this is a hieroglyph of a potter. Let's zoom in here a little bit. You could see this is a person kneeling down and making pottery. And three strokes indicate potters, so plural, many of them. So overseer of potters. Zoom back out. So to the ka of the overseer of potters, nehi, ta, sokar, en, pepi. So this is a full name. This is a composite name of three different gods. And this is Nehi Ta Sokar of Pepi. Pepi is the person right over here. So much like if you read the papyrus of the Book of Ani or the Book of the Dead, Ani would always say the scribe, the Osiris scribe, Ani. They would give themselves divinity in front and then their names. And Nehi was just another representation of Ta. This is a three construct name. So Nehi Ta Sokar of Pepi. True of voice, vindicated or justified, born of, born of the lady of the house, Itti, probably his grandmother. True of voice. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. Pepe is male. His true of voice is Ma'e Haru, so it's masculine. But if you look at his, his mother, Teti, it is Ma'et Haru, the little tea bread right over here, indicates the feminine, so Ma'et Haru. So that's the difference right there with the grammar. So you just learned a little grammar. Now, continuing down here in the six, uh, six horizontal, his son, now this is a uh, the duckling and it's got a stroke on top here. And when it has that, it indicates that this is a son of uh, the son of a father. But now there's a second one. This might have been a redundant expression or maybe an emphatic expression, meaning the, the son, his son, but that's how it is. The son, his son, Redidi. That's his son's name. Probably the first, always indicating his first. Could be even first son. First son, his son, Redidi. True of voice. Now, pay attention here. Remember what I explained over here, the grandmother or the mother of Pepi had a T for feminine ma'et? Well, now the son has ma'et, the feminine. So this is a mistake. So there you go. The scribes made mistakes. They mixed the genders. Ma'et haru instead of ma'e haru. So this is a mistake. Continuing on. His son, so his second son, E or I, Again, he mixed up the genders. Ma'et Huru. Should it be should be Ma'e Huru like their father, Ma'e Huru. Continuing on. Let's zoom all over here. His daughter now. Have you noticed? Pay attention here. Let's just zoom out so we get the whole Stella. The two sons, the son, his son, his son. Now it's his daughter, the little T on top, like the T in the feminine indicates sat, not sa, but sat, meaning daughter. His daughter, satta, or ta sat. If you follow the honorific transposition of respecting that the gods are always in front, then ta sat would be the correct way, or satta, depending. Here the gender was correct. He made ma et haru, so the little, the little t is there. There you go, right there, so ma et haru right over there, so it's done correctly. Continuing down here, he has a second daughter, so two sons and two daughters. He has Redi, E, Sapta, and he also has Iti, which is also the name as the grandmother. So his, his daughter, his beloved, Iti, 
Ma'et Haru and the correct gender for true of voice, just, justified or vindicated. Finally, a much why is this vertical? Because this is independent of the entire stella, horizontal lines. You have the vertical because the wife is sitting right here holding a lotus flower and giving her own little offering of bread and beer and flower and the lotus, which most women were seen holding or wearing on their head. So this was equated, associated with the feminine. This is his wife, lady of the house, Hepi. That's his wife's name. He is Peppy, right over here, and she is Hepi. True of voice, vindicated, and the gender is correct, Ma'et Haru. So in the Stella, you have Peppy sitting down as being the first or foremost of the house, sitting down on a chair, giving offering of beer, bread, um, flour, uh, or floral, and his wife doing the same, a lotus floral with beer, bread, and many different offerings. So this is the Stella of Pepe uh, and limestone. This is something very easy to read, not very complicated. If you can start reading this, you'll discover most of the Stellas are identical. They start kind of the same. You'll always see this little combination start here with royal offering given to Osiris or Anubis or Ptah, whomever the god they worship in whichever district they're in. And usually a continuation and then some more continuation to the gods and then begins the offering that they give. So honoring the gods first, the offerings of what they're giving, and then the introduction of who they are and their families with their, for example, here, the two sons, the two daughters, and then the wife, which is the, head, which is the mistress of the house. And that's pretty much it. And when people cross and read this, and they know who it is, they would generally give offering and hopefully that was the hope. So there we go. That's the basically the reading of the Stella of Pepe and the overseer, just so you know who it is, the overseer of the potters. Thank you very much for uh, following this video. I hope you liked it and learned a little bit something today. If you have any questions, please send me questions or DM me or put the comments on the, the post, I'll be happy to answer your questions. I'll be doing hopefully some more of these in the near future. Thank you very much again and have a great day.